Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are continuing to talk about probably the coolest story in college football for the next 12 months. Coach Prime at Colorado. And the question is, can he revitalize a program that went 1-11, and looked to be one of the worst Power 5 programs in the whole entire country? And that answer seems to be yes so far. He's been there for a couple of weeks, and he's already bringing in a massive amount of talent. This morning, Omar White out of the 2024 class commits to Colorado. Again, before we get into the story and talking Coach Prime and how this is going to look, just want to say thank you guys for the support. We've been talking a lot of Colorado football. It is the coolest story in college sports right now and what Coach Prime can do. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we appreciate you guys for real and all the support you guys have shown. Bill, I want to start with kind of talking about Omar White and the future of how Coach Prime is going to revitalize this program, yes, he's going to have to hammer the transfer portal hard because the talent on this current roster at Colorado is not good enough. And if you want to win six, seven, eight games next year, you're going to have to go to the portal because you're not going to get high school kids in 2023 that are going to make your team good enough to compete at the Pac-12 level. It's just too late. There's not enough time. and You can't really rely on 18-year-old kids to come in and change it in year one. That being said, if he wants to have long-term success at Colorado, he's going to have to win these recruiting battles. They brought Coach Prime in to be a talent acquire guy, and they just won a recruiting battle over teams like Clemson, like Alabama, from a top 100 kid from the state of Georgia. This is absolutely a massive get for Coach Prime. Yeah, and the good part for this team is, A, he's doing it now, and and again, these kids are obviously picking between Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, teams that have – for 10 plus years with the same kind of coaches and staffs put guys into the NFL draft. And, and at the end of the day, that's what the high schoolers are, are trying to do. So even, even though coach prime hasn't been in college football for, for at nearly as long as those guys and he, guys are believing in him and in his ability to ultimately develop them and turn them into pros. That's because again, that's what, when you're talking about these D linemen in, in high school and O linemen and, and some of these positions that, maybe aren't the same star level as a wide receiver. That's what they, they that's what they want. Omar White wants to go to the NFL, no doubt. And it's really big for Coach Prime that these guys truly believe in what he can do for them and, and how he's going to be able to develop them into pros. Yeah, and, and the second biggest thing is we've seen Coach Prime get some of the skill position guys that we'll talk about a little later in the transfer portal. But what some of you Colorado fans have been saying in the comment section, and I totally agree, is the fronts on both sides of the ball – also needs some attention. And this is a guy that is going to be dominant in the middle of your defense. Again, 6'3", 307 pounds is a 2024 kid. I mean, this kid is probably 17 years old and he's already a grown man. Getting guys who can physically hold up against teams like Oregon, against teams like Utah in the Pac-12 is going to be massive. And this is why I think it's such a big win. Not only is it over the blue bloods of college football, but it's also that position group that maybe isn't as much flashy. And Coach Prime is still getting it done. I want to take us to kind of where he's going at the high school level because, again, that's really important for kind of the longevity of a program. If you want to build a program, you can't really build it in the transfer portal. And you look at the 2025 class, they have the number one overall class in 2025. I get it's very early, but you're picking up commitments from a guy like Winston Watkins, who's a top 15 player nationally, one of the best wide receivers in the country. That's the type of stuff they brought Coach Prime in to do. And I, it's really hard to argue that this isn't going to work out for him in Boulder. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I, I think you you probably – the 2023 class, I think we all knew was, wasn't was going to be the loaded class, at least at the high school level. That Not enough time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you coach a whole season. You coach through your bowl, and, and he obviously did that where a lot of coaches don't. You, you just don't have the time to develop the relationships with all those high schoolers. But he's got a good start in 24, has what seems to be a good start in 25. And, and God, if they start winning some games in Colorado, like that, I can't even, I can't imagine that's going to really heat it up. Cause right now you still think Colorado, or not, not now, but like obviously Colorado was what they were. No, no big dogs were really looking at them much. But once Coach Prime can get in there, if he can get in there and start rolling a little bit and start at least being competitive with these USC's and these Oregon's and 
in the big dogs. In the, and in he's the even conference. pulling kids from, from Georgia, from LSU, and Marion Miller from LSU. Yeah. I mean, he's competing for guys not only just out in the West Coast, but all over the entire country. And that is massive when you talk about building a program because, again, it's hard to build a program with the only talent out on the West Coast. You have to be in Florida. You have to be in Texas. And Coach Prime is doing that. Yeah, no, I mean, if I was a Colorado fan, I'd just be so excited. And it's been like so – you needed something. You needed a shakeup, obviously, and, and and you're getting it, and you're getting a guy who I, I think he wants to be there. I'm sure he had other options at the big college football level uh, coming into this year, but but a guy who chose Colorado and, and, and seems like he's aligned with the AD, and I, mean, I don't know. It's just it's so exciting, and it, it's fun that you ho- – I hope you get another good, really good team in the Pac-12 because that conference – you You're just not sure what it's going to look like. I haven't really seen them in the, the big dance in, in a while since maybe – I don't even remember the last time. So <laughs> what I want to talk about now is, yes, it, recruiting the high school ranks is going to be very important for the longevity of the program, but you also need to start off hot. Like I, I, I think that Colorado destination maybe becomes a little less attractive if you go 2-10 and 10 next year and you don't win big games and you're not competitive in the Pac-12 and – Quite frankly, if they don't hammer the transfer portal, that's probably what it's going to look like. As good of a coach as Coach Prime is, you have to have the talent. And you look at Colorado's recruiting classes in 2021, 65. In 2022, it was 58. Like, they don't recruit at a Power 5 level. They don't have Power 5 guys on that roster. So you right, what you have to do to win in 2023 is hammer the transfer portal of guys who've played at a very high level. And this is the year to do it. When you look at the top 100 players in the transfer portal, just this yeah. early, you have a lot of power five starters who are sitting there looking for new homes and it's going to even get bigger after these bowl games finish up. And then after spring ball, it's going to be even more plentiful. And you see coach prime getting a really, really good start at bringing in a lot of talent. We've obviously talked about like the guys like Travis Hunter, Shadur Sanders, big time names, but he also landed a guy in Jimmy Horn from USF last, I believe it was on Christmas yesterday. Who's a guy that a skill position that if you're looking for an immediate impact, in a guy that can change an offense, Jimmy Horn with his elite speed and quickness at USF, I think will provide a lot of juice to Colorado immediately in 2023. Yeah, and I, that's going to be an interesting thing, like how he can close this portal period out and, and whether, I mean, there's still some big names out there that I think he can make a run at. And uh, certainly be, again, of what you mentioned, like the, the portal is going to need to be their biggest ally, like it was at USC, like it, like it is when you're coming into a new regime that has just been down. Cause when you're down that long, you don't recruit and you don't have the talent base. So I'm, I'm so with you. Like, and, I, and I'm sure he's going to do it. He's already on a very good start. At, at least what it looks like to me in terms of getting big names in, he just keeps that rolling. I think they can be competitive. And again, I don't know that it's going to be to- a USC turnaround just because I do think USC was starting at a, a pretty, yes, pretty far far ahead i mean they weren't great under helton but they weren't horrible i mean this is, a, this is a much bigger rebuild than usc but you still saw the blueprint of what lincoln riley did he went out and got exactly. 25 plus transfers to kind of fill in that depth chart i again i've said it before i i think coach prime is going to bring in at least 35 dudes in this period and then after spring ball and this roster is going to be completely different Another thing to monitor is the scholarships of guys who are already at Colorado and how many of those guys are, are going to be hitting the port on how much room you have on your roster scholarship wise to get more guys in. But you're taking a look at some of the guys that are still available. They've already brought in. I mean, I was looking at it this morning. They probably got 12 starters. And you look at a guy like Taj Austin from West Virginia. He was good at West Virginia. He will play whether he starts or whether he's on the two deep. He's going to be an impact player. Save him Washington from Kent State. Obviously, guys like Tra- Tra- uh, Jimmy Horn. Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, you look at the guys who are still available in the portal, a guy like Trey Sanders, who I believe calls Coach Prime his uncle, a former five-star from IMG who's struggled with injuries. He's still in the portal. There's guys that uh, are still available who will provide immediate impact. To and who will come, come available after these top four teams play in their big bowl games because – you can't really transfer easily, I don't think, when your team's still playing for a title game, or I don't think a lot of guys want to. But you you know Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and TCU pro- probably are going to shed some players. So, they're, they're, again, there's going to be a continuous role of 
players into the portal where, where again, you look at a Colorado, a team that's aggressively trying to rebuild and has to. I mean, this has never been a better time than probably now. Because I don't, I don't know that this the portal is going to continue to be as stocked maybe in the future as guys kind of realize maybe you're not always going to greener pastures. Right now, I think it's exciting. I think, yes, a lot of guys. I think the like portal they, in 2023, and this is what I'm saying is it's the perfect year for Coach Prime to start this rebuild at a program that just lacks so much talent because. These are a lot of kids who were recruited during COVID, and it was kind of like blind dating. Like, they weren't in on official visits. Coaches yeah. weren't out to see them. A lot of their high school seasons were cut short or canceled. And then you also didn't have NIL. And so these guys who were in the 2020 yeah. class, the 2019 class, they didn't have time or they didn't have the ability to shop around for NIL offers or to be in an official visits if you're a COVID recruit. And so there's a lot of guys who for either they want to see what other NIL offers they can get, or just it wasn't a good fit because you guys didn't see me play. I didn't come into the program. You're seeing a bunch of guys who are in the portal who, in years past, the portal was kind of full of guys who just maybe just weren't that good and needed to transfer out for reasons like, I just can't play on this team. I need to find a lower level. Now, there is like, you look at this, the amount of players, a lot of guys have already committed, but like guys like Fentrell Cypress from Virginia, he's a dog. And if you want to, you want if you're a quarterback and you're wondering where to play, I mean, Colorado is a big time like, destination and, and getting coached up by Coach Prime. A lot of guys, Jahad Carter, I've been hearing some buzz for Colorado as well, that Syracuse safety. I mean, there is a lot of good players who are still not committed yet. Dante Cephas, still not committed to Penn State, that I know for a fact that you're probably going to be getting Coach Prime looking at. And there's a, from what I'm hearing, there is a line out the door for these kids who are in the portal to go play for Coach Prime. Yeah, and again, I I think it's an excellent opportunity for a lot of college football players to kind of maybe build up their career and be be get reach the the point they want to because you're gonna have opportunities. You're gonna have a coach who, I, again, I as much as he hasn't coached at the college level, he's done a really good job developing high schoolers, developing. I mean, he's obviously coached the sons. I'm I'm pretty sure right through their whole lives. So he's a guy who worked out pretty good for those two. Uh, certainly. I mean, two guys look like they're probably possibly going to be NFL players at some point. So again, I, I think this is a, a wonderful time to be Colorado, wonderful time to be uh, coach Deion Sanders. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, this is like the fun part of college football. This is just like the, what this gets is the pinnacle of college playing. football. It's the best story in college football. And this Colorado team come 2023 when they're playing Nebraska in their opener, it is going to look so different. It's almost going to be unrecognizable from the 2022 team in terms of Full stadiums, excitement, all the things that make college football great. And I think would attract big recruits you're going to have at Colorado now because at the before this, the empty stadiums. You God, like, and this is such a big season that. in terms of like if you can go. And I, I think a realistic um, goal is six and six and, and make a bowl game. That would be such a drastic turnaround from where this program was in 2022 and 2021. And if you can do that and show recruits in the 2024 class and the 2025 class that like we're building something special in Boulder, that's probably going to be your outside of going and playing for coach prime, probably the most charismatic guy in college football right now, but also we're developing a master program. Come be a part of this change. This is this is truly if they can go win six, seven games in 2023, that's going to be one of your biggest selling points is we're winning. We're going to build this program and come be a part of it. We're this winning. Is, and we're going to become a great player. This is going to be just one of the most fun stories to watch. We're going to be monitoring it. We're going to be talking about it a lot. So if you guys do enjoy it, consider subscribing. We appreciate the support you guys have shown, especially the Colorado fans. And most of you just a college football fan. I haven't watched a Colorado, a Colorado game in, years i'll probably be watching all 12 of them next year yeah. probably 13 because they're gonna be playing in a bowl game fire up me on the hype train for the colorado buffaloes again appreciate you guys supporting the channel if you like it consider subscribing we appreciate it and we'll talk to y'all later peace